Grace and peace to you and welcome to worship for Sunday, April the 7th, 2024, from Charleswood United Church in Winnipeg. My name is Michael Wilson. I'm being joined as ever and as ably by Benjamin, and together it is our delight to offer you this time of prayer, praise, and celebration on this, the second Sunday of Easter. I remind us that Charleswood United Church is on Treaty One land, the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, and Dene people, the ancestral land of the Dakota and Lakota people, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. We are a community committed to a future of right relations and reconciliation. It is the second Sunday of Easter and our celebrations of the resurrection continue. Our hope is lifted up, our spirits are raised by the good news of Jesus Christ. It also means that we are in the month of April, and as a dry parking lot indicates, the weather is changing and our busyness is increasing. April is a very busy month here at Charleswood United Church, and if you visit our website, you'll be able to see some of the activities that are coming up. The bridge luncheon and the quiz night are sold out and all set to go. The most important thing immediately is that next week is our rummage sale. So starting on Monday, and there's a list of the things that you can bring on our website. You can bring things into the church by next Saturday. We'll be all set up, priced, and ready to go. This is a big event and a big fundraiser for the church. So if you're able to participate in any number of ways with the rummage sale, we hope you'll find out more about it and do so. We're delighted you have chosen to spend this time with us. Come, let us worship God together. reading from the first letter of John in chapter 1. Let us listen for the word of God. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with God and with Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, 
that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus the Son cleanses us from all sin. Amen. Thanks be to God. Cantate Domino, Canticum Novum, sing to the Lord a new jubilant song. Cantate Domino, Canticum Novum, all mystera, sing to the Lord of the If you lived in Winnipeg at the time, I wonder if you remember where you were on February 26, 1979. I was in high school in grade 10, and even though it had been broadly announced that there was going to be a total solar eclipse passing right over Winnipeg, I was asked by my parents to go to school. <laughs> I remember the school was very empty that day, that most students had chosen to stay home. And I remember that the school had been given strict instructions. No one was to go outside. It was not to be risked staring at the sun while you were under the responsibility of, of my high school or any other school. But as the moment approached, and it was told with precise time when the eclipse would begin, a certain euphoria set in, a certain hunger to see this incredible event. And I remember running around trying to find a way in the back hall so that I could step out into the parking lot at just the moment and look up into the sky and see, for probably the only time in my life, a total solar eclipse. There is going to be a total solar eclipse passing over North America this Monday. It is going to follow a band from the American Southwest up through the Northeast, straight over the city of Indianapolis, along that line formed by some of the Great Lakes, Lake Erie and Lake Ontario, out towards the St. Lawrence Seaway. It is not a large area that gets to experience the total solar eclipse, only 100 to 115 kilometers wide. It does not last long, only two or three minutes if you happen to be in the place. 
And of course, it's unbelievably unpredictable because you require a clear sky in order to see a total solar eclipse if it's cloudy and overcast. The eclipse will happen, but the effect will be far less than one had hoped for. A total solar eclipse where the sun and the moon and the earth are in perfect alignment, but the moon between the earth and the sun causes the light and the warmth for the temperature drops during a, sol a solar eclipse to, to, to block for a, a few minutes. And we experience something very rare and very dramatic. The heavens provide a moment rare and dramatic. The small first letter of John found very near the end of the New Testament is less a letter and more of a inter-house memo um, provided by the community of John's Gospel. By that I mean the early Christian community formed or inspired by the Apostle John, but some two generations later, who give us the Gospel of John and three small letters at the end of the, at the, end of the New Testament. And 1 John 1, which was our reading for today, begins with a testimony. It wants to say, this is what we have seen and this is what we have heard. We have seen it with our own eyes. We have touched it with our own hands. And here's the testimony. Here's the message that they offer that God is light and there is no darkness in God. You can hear echoes of the prologue to John's gospel in this letter that is 1 John that the light comes into the world and the darkness cannot overcome it. It's a great analogy. It's a great metaphor, of course, as is the total solar eclipse. Because in a total solar eclipse, the sun itself is not diminished. It does not lose its power. It does not lose its position. It is as bright and radiant and hot as it is the moments before and the moments after. What happens is that something comes in between you and I and this source of light and life that is the sun. This darkness blocks the sun, at least temporarily, seeming to be as though it could overcome it. But the darkness is not in the light itself. The darkness struggles against the light. I'd like to think that when the early church says God is light and there is no darkness in God, that they understood the presence and the persistence of darkness. They understood that the darkness, sin, does not come from God, is not part of God but that it is a reality. And it was reality to the early church, and it is a reality to the present day church, because it is a reality in all times for all of humankind. There is an innumerable list of examples of what the darkness looks like and feels like. We experience some of them in our own living. A very clear case of it was on display in the news this week. The World Central Kitchen is a charity that provides food relief in places where people are suffering greatly. It was established in the year 2010 by Spanish chef Jose Andreas, who went to Haiti following the devastating earthquake there in order to feed hungry people. So popular was this 
initiative that it became an agency and it continues to do so in many places of trouble in the world. And the World Central Kitchen went to Gaza this past week. Seven humanitarian aid workers were killed as they sought to deliver food to hungry people. They were killed by an airstrike. Some say it was a mistake, some say it wasn't. An airstrike of the Israeli army. Even though the delivery of the food by World Central Kitchen was coordinated with the Israeli Defense Force itself. Darkness. The death of these seven humanitarian aid workers, including one who was Canadian. Darkness, the plight of the Palestinian people living in Gaza with nowhere to run, nowhere to turn, nowhere to be safe. Darkness, the heart and actions of the Hamas militants who on October 7th initiated and instigated this horrible warfare that has broken out ever since. Darkness, darkness, darkness. The darkness does come into the world. It takes the form of warfare and it takes the form of disaster and it takes the form of, of illness and it takes the form of, of, of broken relations and it takes the form of, well, you know, because we all experience the darkness from time to time. There's a little detail in the passion of Jesus Christ that we can overlook. It seems to be placed there for dramatic effect. In the Gospel of Luke, it says that while Jesus on, was on the cross at midday, the sky turned black. It's a phrase that is used in the familiar hymn, Lord of the Dance. And that that darkness lasted for three days. Some scientists and historians have tried to figure out if a solar eclipse, a total solar eclipse, passed over Jerusalem in the year 29 or 33 or, or thereabouts. I think it is mostly used for dramatic effect because the darkness of that day was not in the sky. The darkness of that day was the cross itself. This emblem of suffering and shame as the old hymn says, this tool of, of the Roman Empire, this symbol of violence and sin, this shape that represents all the darkness in the world. That cross is, in the testimony of the gospel, countered by a great light, a great love that was said to make itself known to the world, to all of humankind, early on the first day of the week, just as the sun rose. On Monday, there's going to be a total solar eclipse, an eclipse of the sun. And if you happen to be in the right place at the right time, and if the skies are clear, people will be amazed as they stare into the heavens. They will be transfixed. They will wonder if they will ever see anything like this again in all of their life. And in that moment, when you are just caught in the awe and wonder of the cosmos, perhaps for some something of a revelation may come to them, that they will see in that reality that which has always been testified to, that God is light and there is no darkness in God. You know, as I think about people staring up into the heavens and the heavens delivering a message, I'm, I'm taken to another story, maybe one familiar to many of you, suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of the heavenly host 
praising God and singing glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom God is well pleased. There is going to be a total solar eclipse in North America on Monday. That there are times when the heavens seem to command our attention. As if, as if heaven itself is saying, go ahead, look somewhere else. I dare you. I suspect that's what was experienced by those first followers who in the light of a new day saw an empty grave. Amen. The spring has come, let all the church be part of it. The world has changed and God is at the heart of it. New right, new day, new colors after winter gray. New light, new day. The spring has come, let all the church be part of it. The sun is warm, let all God's children play in it. The world expands, let's spread the gospel way in it. New leaf, new thrust. New grieving for the love of Christ. New leaf, new thrust. The sun is warm, let all God's children play in it. The spring has come, new people are the flowers of it. Through wind and rain, new life is in the showers of it. New bud, new shoes, new hope will bear the Spirit's fruit. New bud. New shoot, the spring has come, new people are the flowers of it. Let us unite our hearts and minds together in prayer. Let us pray. God of new life, we praise you for the season of hope and joy we continue to celebrate. In the images of the empty tomb and the folded grave clothes, we find testimony to the power of love to overcome anything. We celebrate the signs of new life that are all around us. In the first crocus and amid receding snow, the flowing river and singing birds, we find the promise of renewal for all creation. We thank you for the resurrection hope that indeed you meet us even with our doubts. In the gathering of your people and the breaking of bread, and in the telling of redemption's story, we find our hearts warmed and comforted. In Easter's hope, we find reason to trust that our prayers are heard and answered. So it is we pause and come before you in prayer that all brokenness should end and darkness be vanquished. We pray for family and friends who find themselves in hospital, in care, or in times of transition, where the new life of Easter must be primarily experienced in heart and spirit. May there be abundance. We pray for those lives that have been upended in places of conflict, whose hearts have been broken, whose homes have been destroyed. We pray for the aid workers who were killed in Gaza this week, for their families and friends, and for the desperate people to whose side they were traveling. We pray for your children in Taiwan who are overcoming the damage done by an earthquake there. In the heart of the gospel is the hope that all things will be made well in the fullness of time. Receive the prayers we offer as we continue to walk towards that glorious day. In the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who leads us to pray together when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this time of worship as we continue to celebrate the season, the hope, and the promise of Easter. For now, be well, be safe, and be hopeful. Amen.